Meanwhile, we're also keeping a close eye on the latest impeachment developments. Later tonight, House Democrats will start debating the two charges against President Trump, obstruction of, just, obstruction of, of Congress and abuse of power. President Trump fired back at Democrats during a campaign rally in Pennsylvania last night. He called their impeachment efforts flimsy and pathetic. A new poll reveals how Americans are feeling about impeachment. It shows a majority of voters are against removing him from office. CBS chief congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes has more from Capitol Hill. These two flimsy, pathetic, ridiculous articles of impeachment. Campaigning in Pennsylvania, President Trump questioned Democrats' motives. They're impeaching me and there are no crimes. This has to be a first in history. They're impeaching me. You know why? Because they want to win an election. And that's the only way they can do it. But the new articles of impeachment warn that the president will, quote, remain a threat to national security and the Constitution if allowed to remain in office. The argument, why don't you just wait, amounts to this. Why don't you just let him cheat in one more election? The first article of impeachment, abuse of power, alleges that President Trump openly and corruptly urged Ukraine to publicly announce investigations into his political opponent, former Vice President Joe Biden. And when the president got caught, he committed his second impeachable act obstruction of Congress. That article accuses the president of directing the unprecedented, categorical and indiscriminate defiance of the House investigation, with the Departments of State, Energy and Defense refusing to produce a single document or record. I think this is a clear, short, concise argument that the president abused his power. Some Democrats, like Congressman Mike Quigley of Illinois, wanted more serious charges, testimony. such as bribery. Are you satisfied with where the party has ended up when it comes to these articles of impeachment? I, I am. Look, this isn't easy. It's complicated, layered and textured. You're trying to explain legal matters to the American people. The president has pushed for a robust defense in the Republican-led Senate. But some in his party don't want to drag the process out. I think the prospect of calling witnesses, in my view, seems unlikely. All right, so let's bring in Nancy Cordes. She's on Capitol Hill, where the public debate will start later on tonight. So, Nancy, you know, what exactly can we expect from tonight's public debate? And what happens after the Judiciary Committee finishes up that official markup? So the Judiciary Committee has more than 40 members and they are each allowed to make an opening statement. So if you do the math, we're looking at hours of opening statements alone before we even get to the debate itself. And so that's why they're starting at 7 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. They're going to give everyone their chance to speak and then most likely break and return tomorrow to continue the debate. That sets up a vote probably tomorrow afternoon um, and we expect that that will be a debate along party lines, no defections on either side. And then it goes to the full House floor. And what I've been told by my sources is that this is not the last thing the Democrats want to do before they leave town. They don't want to leave town on this note for the holidays. So uh, they may hold the vote on impeachment early in the week next week, maybe Tuesday, and then vote on the other things that are on the docket that are more bipartisan in nature, like uh, funding the government and this new trade deal. So, Nancy, uh, let me get your sense in talking to your sources as to what might be different once this impeachment battle moves to the Senate. Uh, is the Senate expected to call witnesses? Uh, are we talking about a long period of time uh, or something a little bit shorter than anticipated? That's all up for discussion right now. I asked the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell yesterday whether he favors a longer trial with more witnesses or a shorter trial that would enable him to move on more quickly to other things. And he said it's really up to the members. Uh, interestingly, a number of Republican senators are now saying they actually don't want this to drag on, that perhaps there won't be any witnesses at all. They say that uh, impeachment is hurting the country the longer it goes in the Senate. Senate, uh, the more circus-like it could become, especially if you start to introduce new witnesses, allow Democrats to bring in new witnesses as well. Uh, this, of course, runs counter to what the president has said publicly, which is that he wants lots of witnesses exonerating him. He wants the Republicans who control the Senate to mount this very strong defense. But, uh, you know, there are some concerns, clearly, among Republicans about 
what dragging this out might actually do for the defense. So he may not get his way on that one. Um, in the articles of impeachment, in the documents, they sort of allude to the conclusions of the Mueller investigation by talking about a pattern of behavior, but they right. don't specifically include it as a, as a cause for articles of impeachment. Why is that? because Democrats decided to play it safe. And there were two articles uh, about which there were virtu was virtually no debate in the House Democratic Caucus, and that is abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Democrats believe those two articles are lock solid, plenty of evidence to back those articles up. They reflect uh, past articles of impeachment, and they feel that they can easily explain them and justify them to a skeptical American public. When you go beyond that, uh, bribery, for instance, there was a lot of debate about bribery, both about what the founders meant exactly when they put bribery into the Constitution and when talking about impeachment, and also whether this president and what he did technically amounted to bribery. And so at the end of the day, what they decided was that they would play it safe and go with this more narrow approach. Uh, there are some Democrats who had wanted to go far but by and large, they you know, seem to be saying that even this narrow approach is fine with them. What was most important to them was to bring forth articles of impeachment in the first place, less important to them what those articles were. So, Nancy, as you know, we spent a lot of time yesterday covering uh, the new trade agreement uh, that seemed to uh, pass, uh, that, uh, that both Republicans and Democrats were sort of uh, crowing about yesterday, including the President of the United States. But I might understand that uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is not going to do anything with this trade deal until next year? He is not going to do anything with this trade deal until next year. He said it's going to have to wait until after the Senate's impeachment trial. And he says that's purely logistics. We are now at the end of the year. There are a number of bills that have to be passed before the House and Senate leave town. They've got to fund the government. And he argues that because out these negotiations for so long, they're basically now in a time crunch. And so he said that her focus on impeachment has forced him to put off the Senate vote until early next year. Uh, beyond that, frankly, there are some Senate Republicans who feel that they were cut out of these trade negotiations in the final few weeks. They feel that the White House may have given too many concessions to Democrats, particularly when it comes to some of the labor rules in this uh, new agreement. And so they're not in a huge hurry to pass it. There are some uh, some frustrations and some bruised feelings, and they're going to take a moment to talk about that and step back before they hold the final vote in the Senate. All right. It's going to be a long night for you, Nancy Cordes. Thank you very much. You're welcome.